Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. This is Sir Gabs. If you are new here, just hit subscribe and click on the notification bell for future videos. This video guys is a continuation of the previous video that I made about word problems involving circles. So this is now word problem number 3. Find the general equation of a circle whose center is at the origin while its circumference is 3 pi units. So again, our goal is only to find the general equation of the circle. Now, we have to recall that in order for us to get the general equation, we should have the standard form of equation first. So always remember, that, guys, that if you need a general equation, you must start in looking for the standard form. Okay? Now, from here, you need h, k, and r again. In this equation, we already have h which is 0 and k which is 0 because it says here that the center of the circle is at the origin. So obviously, it's, it's in 0, 0. So h is 0 and k is 0. Now, for the radius, we do not have that. So we have to solve for r. Okay? From the problem, it is given that the circumference is equal to 3 pi. So we can just use or recall the formula in solving for the circumference of the circle, which is... 2 pi r. Substitute the value of c, which is equal to 3 pi, and then just copy 2 pi r on the right hand, on the right hand side rather. Now from here we have to we have to get the value of r only, so we have to remove 2 pi on the right hand side. So how do we do that? Okay, okay. So what I mean is this: I have to remove 2 pi here so that r will be left. Okay. So how do I do that? Algebraically, I will multiply the whole equation by 1 over 2 pi. So why should I multiply this by 1 over 2 pi so that um, if I multiply them, I can just cancel 2 pi and what's left will be r. Okay? Or actually, in some other cases, you can just do this, dividing both sides by 2 pi. Well, actually, this, this thing here is just coming from this idea. So before it arrives here, you, ac you are actually multiplying the whole equation by 1 over 2 pi. So basically, you have 2 pi over 2 pi. What's left will be what? That will be r. And then on the left side, you actually have cancel pi. And so you have actually 3 halves. So when we say cancel, that means pi over pi. That is just actually equal to 1. So 3 halves times 1. Of course, you actually have 3 halves. The next to that, we can now use the value of r, substitute to the standard form of equation, and then obtain, obtain the general form of equation. So from here, I substituted the value of h, okay? So from here, this coming from this format. So h is 0, so I have x minus 0 here. And then k is also 0, so I have y minus 0 quantity squared. Equals, of course, the r squared that is equivalent to 3 halves quantity squared. Because r is 3 halves, of course, and then you have r squared here, so just make 3 halves as the base. Next, algebraically, you will come up with x squared plus y squared equals 9 over 4. Okay, so x minus 0 is x squared, and then y minus 0 is just y and then squared. Of course, you can just um, use the loss of exponents here. You can just have 3 squared over 2 squared, which is basically 9 over 4. Or you can use 3 halves times 3 halves idea, which means 9 over 4 still. Then, again, if you remember, I told you that when you solve for the general form of equation, you should get rid of the fractions. So I must not have 4 here. So in order for me to, um, in order for me not to have 4, I will multiply the whole equation by 4. So that I will come up with 4x squared plus the 4y squared equals 9 times 4 all, all over 4. So why I, cho why, why I chose 4 is because I have seen in, in advance that if I multiply 4 to this fraction, then obviously I can cancel 4. Okay? So, of course, applying the um, property of equality, I have to multiply this number to the whole thing. So, this should be 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times y squared is 4y squared. And then you have 4 times 9 or 9 times 4 all over 4. Okay? So, cancel 4 here or just 4 over 4 is just simply 1. So, 9 times 1 is just, of course, 9. So you have here 4x squared plus 4y squared equals 9. Of course, we are, we are to find the general equation, so it should be in the format 4x squared plus the 4y squared minus 9 equals 0. Well, when you talk about general equation, it just simply means the, the right-hand sign is equal to 0. This, that's one of the indicators that 
you actually have the general form of equation. Again, when you talk about the general form of equation, most likely, or all the time, okay, the right-hand side should be equal to zero. So that's why I have um, I have applied here the additive, additive inverse. So I should make 9 0. How do I do that? I should subtract 9 by its inverse or by its opposite. So this should be 9 minus 9, of course, that should be 0. So since I, I subtracted 9 here, I should also subtract 9 on the left-hand side. So, that, so that's why I have I have this 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 9. Okay? So final answer, you actually have, therefore, equation of the circle describing the problem um, is 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 9 equals 0. Word problem number 4. So find the general equation of a circle whose center is at negative 2, 7, while its area is 8 pi square units. Okay, so the same way you are to find the general equation, but then again we have a different situation since in the previous example, we actually have the circumference. This time we are given the area of the circle. So from here again, you have to recall the standard form of equation because we are to find the general equation. So... We still need h, k, and r. h is given as negative 2. k is given as 7. But then again, we don't have the value of r. So I will be using the data in the problem. So from the problem, it says the area is 8 pi square units. So I can just write it um, this way. 8 pi equals pi r squared. Right? Because if you recall the area of the circle, this should be area equals pi r squared. Now I will substitute 8 pi to a okay because area is 8 pi so of course a is just the same as 8 pi in this situation in this situation of course now from here i have to solve for r so where is r as you can see there is r variable here or the radius so i have to get rid of this pi here i have to remove this but it should be in a legal way no so it should be in a legal way doing it algebraically so how do i do that of course um, if you may recall, you just multiply it by 1 over one over pi. So you are just actually multiplying it by its reciprocal. So pi multiplied by 1 over pi. So again, why did I choose 1 over pi? Well, the answer is simple because I have, I have seen in, in advance that if I multiply this by 1 over pi, then the value will be equal to 1, right? So pi times 1 over pi is just equal to 1, okay? So if this is equal to 1, then r squared times 1 is just equal to r squared. So again, you can also do this just like dividing the whole thing by pi. So divide the left side by pi and also the right side by pi. So when you do that, that should be 8, right? Because this is 1. Pi over pi is 1, so times 8, you actually have 8. And then from here, pi over pi, that's 1 times r squared, of course you have r squared. Now, algebraically, you don't need r squared but only r, okay? Well, well, you can do that if, if this is the kind of problem, but I have to be very specific because uh, I am solving for r here. So from r, I mean from 8 equals r squared, I can just take the square root of both sides. And so I will get the positive and negative square root of 8, which is equal to this time equal to r. Now... Um, I can actually break down 8 into 4 times 2 to simplify further. So I have now the positive and negative 2 square root of 2, which is the value of r. But then again, you have to remember, okay, we have to remember that any radius or the radius of the circle is never negative. Okay, so there are actually two values of r here, positive 2 square root of 2 and the negative 2 square root of 2. But then you have to recall or you have to remember, you have to consider that when you say radius, it's always positive. So that's why I have here, I considered positive 2 square root of 2 as the value of r. But anyway, if you use the negative the negative value in solving the equation of, or in solving the general equation of the circle, it actually doesn't matter because we are still to square this. Okay? Right? If, if, you, if you will try to look at the standard form of equation, that's actually r squared. So if you will substitute the value of r, Either positive or negative, it will still be positive because you have to take the square. Okay? But if if the problem is asking you to give this the radius of the circle, you have to think um, or you have to consider 
that radius is always positive. So you have to reject the negative value. Now, same way, just substitute the values. So from a, a, x minus h, x minus h, that should be x plus 2 this time quantity squared. So y plus, it's because if you will try to substitute, that should be x minus the negative 2. So that's double negation. There's minus and then negative 2. So of course, it becomes positive. Okay? And then for the you know, second term, you have actually y minus k. So this should be y minus 7. So it remains negative. So you have y minus 7 quantity squared equals r squared. So you can actually have um, 2 square root of 2 quantity squared. So this is what I was talking about a while ago. That regardless of the sign, whether you, you use the positive or negative sign, you will come up with the same answer because you will still use the square or you will actually apply the square of the number. So once you square this number, it will always be positive. Now on the other side, you can also use a shortcut or the, the, uh, um, the shorter way of, of getting the value. So it's like instead of solving for r, you can just solve for the r squared. Okay, so let me explain it this way. Honestly, the problem is not asking you for the radius. Um, we are solving the radius because we have the initiative to, I mean, based on our initiative that we need it, right? We are solving for the radius because we need it. But then again, if you actually focus on the goal, your goal is the general equation. And notice that the general equation needs not just r, but r squared. You actually obtain r squared already, okay? From here, you already have r squared. It says here in the, in the um, solution that r squared is equal to 8. So, since we don't need r, or actually the problem is not asking you to get r, you can just stop your solution here. It's okay. So, from here, if you do that, all you have to do is to substitute, okay, is to substitute 8 to r squared. So it means r squared is being replaced by 8 right away because that's the value of r squared, that's 8. But then again, in our solution here, we are solving for r. Okay, so that was anyway you, an alternative solution. It's up to you if you will use that or not. Then you, you can actually use the special products. You can have x squared or this x times x is x squared. Then x times 2 is 2x times 2, you have 4x. Then 2 squared is equal to 4. From here, you have y squared, then y times negative 7 is negative 7y. You have times 2, you have negative 14y. And then negative 7 times negative 7 is positive, 49. Then distribute the um, exponent, so you have 2 squared, and then the square root of 2 squared can actually cancel the radical sign later. Okay, so you can you will come up with 4 times 2 this time. So I'm just actually, re I'm just actually arranging here. First, uh, x squared, and then y squared, and then the 4x, the negative 14y, and then positive 4, positive 49, and then you have 2 squared is 4. This one cancels the radical symbols. So you actually have 2. Then you will come up with x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 14y plus 53 equals 8. So notice, as I said a while ago, if you use the alternative solution instead of solving, instead of solving r, you solve for r squared. So r squared is already given here as 8. So instead of continuing until 2 square root of 2, you can just stop here and then replace r squared by 8, which is this one. But anyway, it doesn't matter if you do that or um, if you do what we are doing right now. Okay. Uh, what's the advantage of this one is maybe you are looking for, I mean, you get the value of the radius specifically. Well, this one, r squared, is not really the radius. So once the problem is asking for the radius, you already have it. And then if the problem is asking for the general equation, you already have it also, if you continue this one. So, of course, additive inverse, make this number equal to 0, I will subtract 8 here. So, of course, in the same way, um, to maintain equality on both sides, I should also subtract 8 on the left side. So I, ca I have come up with x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 14y, and then you have plus 45 equals 0. Okay, so therefore, the equation of the circle describing the problem is x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 14y plus 
plus the 45 equals 0. Okay, right, so thank you for listening. This is uh, these are the, the sample problems that I am giving you about about word problems involving circles. So thank you and goodbye.